name is Evelyn Braille. Today I'm going to tell you three stories about the general, the grunt, and the citizen. Their stories are all linked and intertwined and their stories are a part of the Siege of Atlanta. First I will tell you the story of the general as we travel on I-75 to downtown Atlanta. It is hard to imagine the dirt roads of 1864 Atlanta bustling with horse-drawn wagons. Atlanta was an important commercial and railway center in the 1860s. According to William Key in his book, The Battle of Atlanta and the Georgia Campaign, wagons and the goods in them were often stamped with Made in Atlanta. For Major General William Tecumseh Sherman, Union Commander of the Military Division of the Mississippi, seeing that Made in Atlanta stamp on confiscated goods emphasized the importance of his job. And what was the Major General's job? Conquer Atlanta. In 75 days covering 100 miles, Sherman battled the Confederate troops from Chattanooga to Atlanta, according to Gary Esselbarger in his book, The Day Dixie Died, The Battle of Atlanta. And on July 22, 1864, the opposing armies fought in Atlanta on Flat Shoals Avenue. Sherman was known as Cump to his friends that C-U-N-P, and Uncle Billy to his troops. Sherman's middle name, Tecumseh, came from a Shawnee Indian chief. Sherman's father died when he was nine, so he was raised by a family friend named Thomas Ewing. Sherman would marry Ewing's daughter, Eleanor, in 1850, keeping family rather close, it seems to me. A 10-mile circle of fortifications surrounded Atlanta when Sherman's army approached, with five points at the center. Sherman did not want to sacrifice his men in a fight because of these massive fortifications. Instead, he began a siege that he watched from his headquarters atop a hill on the site of the present-day Carter Library. The cannon shelling of Atlanta began on July 20th, and continued until August 25th. The Union soldiers used a type of cannon called a parrot rifle. The 20-pound parrot shell had a maximum range of 4,400 yards, according to the Kennesaw Mountain Battlefield National Park exhibit. The shells damaged or destroyed every building in Atlanta, as depicted in the Atlanta History Center's exhibit on the Civil War. After constant bombardment and bloody skirmishes, the Confederate Army evacuated Atlanta on September 1st. Sherman had done it. Atlanta was conquered. Sherman was known as being ruthless. His army dominated with the total destruction of the enemy's resources, but he believed that in doing so, the war would soon be won. He was admired for his talents by both North and the South. Perhaps the most touching tribute to Sherman was given by Confederate General Joe Johnston. Johnston fought against Sherman in Georgia until relieved of his command by President Davis just before the Battle of Peachtree Creek. Johnston and Sherman later became friends. Johnston attended Sherman's funeral in New York in 1891. He stood in the rain to watch the procession pass. Two weeks later, Johnston died of a cold caught from standing in the rain at Sherman's funeral. Next, I will tell you the story of a grunt, commonly called an infantry soldier. Sam Watkins was a Confederate soldier born in June of 1829 in Columbia, Tennessee. He lived and worked on his father's farm until he joined the 1st Tennessee Infantry Regiment in the spring of 1861. Sam was 21 years old. Sam Watkins' importance lies in two facts. First, Sam fought in many bloody Civil War battles like Shiloh, Murfreesboro, Chattanooga, Chickamauga, and of course, the Battle of Atlanta. Second, he recorded his remembrances of the battles. In 1881, Sam wrote a series for his hometown newspaper with his recollections of the war. The columns were collected and published as a book shortly thereafter. The, the book, called Company H, or a sideshow of the Big Show, vividly recounts Sam's battle stories. On July 22, 1864, 
Sam Watkins fought in Cheatham's division under Manny against Sherman's Union Army in the Battle of Atlanta. His location on that hot and sweltering day was along Flat Shoals Road. Sam recalls marching with a terrified, conscripted soldier by the name of James Galbraith. Galbraith was muttering and lamenting as they marched, and when the line would stop, he would get down on his knees and pray. Sam told him, Galbraith, why are you making a fool of yourself that way for? If you are going to be killed, why you are as ready now as you ever will be, and you are making everybody feel bad. Quit that nonsense. A few minutes later, a cannonball flew through the infantry, striking Galbraith's body and tearing him apart. Sam thought that Galbraith was dead, but stumbled upon him when visiting a field hospital. When Sam asked Galbraith about his wounds, Galbraith pulled down the blanket covering his torso. Sam wrote, The lower part of his body was hanging to the upper part by a shred, and all this entrails were lying on the cot with him, the bile and other excrements ex exuding from them, and they full of maggots. Galbraith would die, and Sam lamented the lot of the common soldier. Many soldiers were old, they often had big families, and the men were forced to leave them to fight. Without a man to support the family, the family suffered and often starved. Sam wrote, Glory is for generals, colonels, majors, captains, and lieutenants. They have all the glory, and when the poor privates win the battle by dint of sweat, hard marches, camp and picket duty, fasting and broken bones, the officers get all the glory. Sam's book has lasted as a tribute to the common soldier, still being published today as a personal memoir of a Southern infantryman. My last story is a story of a man named Lucky, who was not a lucky man at all. Solomon Sam Lucky was a well-liked barber. Sam was also one of the free black men in Atlanta. His barber shop was located in downtown Atlanta. During the beginning days of the siege, Sam Lucky stepped out of the door of his barber shop. He walked to the corner of Alabama and Whitehall streets, standing by a cast iron gas lamp, according to Andy Johnston in Actual Factual Georgia. One of Sherman's cannons shot a parrot shell, which struck the cast iron gas lamp. Cast iron shrapnel exploded from the lamp. Sam Lucky was struck in the leg by a flying piece and his leg, leg was damaged beyond repair. Sam was taken to the Atlanta Medical College and his leg, leg was amputated. Solomon Sam Lucky only survived a few hours more. Sam Lucky is honored in Atlanta with his street namesake, Lucky Street. Lucky Street begins at Georgia Tech and runs south to the Lucky Marietta District. Major General William Tecumseh Sherman, Confederate foot soldier Sam Watkins, and free black barber Solomon Sam Lucky are linked forever in the history of the battle and the siege of Atlanta. They walked the streets of Atlanta, just as you and I do to today. So as you drive down Flat Shoals Road, stroll down Lucky Street, or drive past the Carter Library, remember them. They lived and died here. Atlanta is hollowed ground. Thank you for joining me today on my trip to Atlanta. This is Evelyn Braille saying, bye y'all.